Meghan Markle here. Today is December 4th, 2023. It is 1.17 a.m. It took me an hour to put the list together because I didn't um, put anything. And I went to Twitter to search for some tweets and I come across about 15 tweets. The majority of them have to do with spare Camilla Tomley. There's one video one of my subscribers mentioned in the comment section about James O'Brien. So I came across it and it's gonna be the second video that I share with you. And there's a longer version. It's like an hour. I'm not gonna go over it. Okay. I'm just gonna go uh, over the small clip that um, I saw on Twitter and share my opinion on that particular one. And then um, when I have time, I could watch the hour plus interview of James O'Brien with Omid Kobe. And the first one is a tweet that I forgot to put on the last video. I skipped it while I was editing and I realized I skipped that one. So I just brought it in on this uh, video. All right. So I have about 15 tweets. So let's uh, check my back end. New subscribers. Welcome. 3,601 subscribers. Welcome. I guess this video um, with the end game, some of the video clips of interviews of Omid is on that particular video. I made it public earlier than the time that I'm supposed to make it er public because um, some of you, you know, who's not on Twitter don't know what's going on and this is the talk of town. So I decided to make it public now. And there were two other videos that I recorded on the same day and uh, they all do. I think it's these two. Which one? Which one? Yeah, that one, December 11, and uh, this one, I believe. But anyway, so let's focus on the background. Okay, there's my revenue, $277.26. In the last 48 hours, I had 3,818 views, and there's my subscription. All right, so let's go on Twitter. This is the tweet that I forgot to put on my last video, okay? That's regarding Scobie's book, okay? Scobie, Prince William and Kate's Boston trip was a complete disaster, we know. I did say I wasn't going to cover it, but so many things were popping up. The squad were talking about it, so that was the talk of town. On that particular time, just go look on the v video around that time. I don't know what I said. I remember she was wearing a green dress, and the squad was saying... Uh, green screen or people were starting putting all sort of things on her clothes but whatever okay so let's see here the bulls let us all know they flap another tour I can't fathom why they will think they could be popular in the USA that ship has sailed okay I mean they went to the home of the Boston Tea Party and thought they'd be readily received these people don't live in the real world I remember when um Leading up to, it was months prior of them going to Boston. And uh, one of the comments that I came across, why they choose, I mean, it was just within a discussion. We don't know if that's their main focus. is because Boston is very racist. So they thought that going over there instead of New York, they will be received. But... <laughs> Not too many people give a F if they show up. What was it? There were places that they were going. They sort of fake the, the crowd. What they wanted to show us that there were a lot of people who came to see them. So they group, they zoom in where the people were. But someone else went and took an aerial view of the group that were there. And it wasn't that much when you look at it in a broader sense you when you look at all the surrounding it was a small amount of people all right and then a couple of people did um 
did not show up or something like that. But whatever. Netflix dropped that trailer during their visit was Petty AF. That is true. I forgot about that. Shipped a green carpet. That's the thing I was talking about. Shipped a green carpet because remember, they are modest and don't pose on the red carpet. But green carpet is okay. None of their tour were ever successful. Even the royal were left in the middle of the <laughs> Ireland tour to cover the Sussexes. Uh, why omit wrong for that? LOL. There was no shade in that excerpt. That was a straight up in your face hatchet job on the husband kins. <laughs> That's that. <laughs> I mean, he's taking a. Uh, I would say, mm, yeah, he's taking a beating. Uh, well, it's the same thing with finding freedom. This was the reason why I bought finding freedom because when he was being interviewed, they were like. I don't know they were really putting him on the spot but he stood his ground and he said what he had to say and I think he's going through the same thing again and this is when on finding freedom because it was two authors Omid and Caroline oh my god I remember her name Caroline Dorette I didn't hear a damn thing about her I even made that point I was like where is she is she even there so I bought the book, Finding Freedom. It wasn't something I was going to buy, but I bought it because of the beating he was getting on the media. I don't know if I'm going to buy this one still. Okay, Let's, let me read what's there and then move on. Is that a... Okay, I thought that was a commercial. Oh, the green screen with uh, Kate going to Boston. Okay, is this when she wore that dress that looked like a green screen? It fit well, but the color was hideous. I wasn't aware they were in the U.S. until weeks after they left. What was it? Did they do something? Oh, they show it on what station? It was not a very, it was one of the, is it NPR or PBS? That's it, PBS. I made the point as well because PBS is a public broadcast station in the U.S. And it is found, funded by the public. So Trump was trying to get rid of it. And I made that point. And uh, it, that's where it was aired. Nobody else, mainstream media, wanted to air it. And uh, it was after, uh, I think it was going to Twitter, not too many people was watching it. And then as soon as whoever posts that on, on Twitter, next thing you know, the numbers, the viewership was going up. I remember it was like playing right on real time to me because when I saw that tweet, someone said not too many people is watching it. Next thing you know, there was another tweet saying the, the viewership is going up. Okay, it's the trip where they asked for the Netflix manager to complain about the trailer for the documentary. Imagine the other goal of going to another country, not even in the Commonwealth, and demanding that they adhere to your comment. <laughs> oh my God, I'll go into this. It was a disaster. They wanted crowd like Beatlemania. Sadly, it didn't happen. And had to invite random uni students. So that's what they did. Okay. Let me see here. Okay. He, he believed they could control the world. Well, I'm telling you, they're aiming for that. All right. They're setting things for him. So he could think that he could control the world. Shit that I see going on. Mm. All right. Next tweet. So now this is the video that one of the squad mentioned did i see that interview with james o'brien i didn't listen to this part that i'm seeing here but when i click on the youtube version i see it was like an hour plus so i was like i'm not gonna go into that okay but i left this for this moment when i'm recording okay wow it makes sense why the uk media is so trash and can't even trust anything they write about harry and megan anytime you see a story about harry and megan the uk the first question should be, how much did they get paid? And, <laughs> and the source for the story. Okay, a minute and 26 seconds. Let's listen. Yeah, absolutely. Which you have to respect as well. And yeah. You know, so what I'm getting is that, uh, uh, I mean, you take the unserious very seriously. Yeah, because there are other people that take it seriously. Of course. And, and, to, and, and to them it is serious but it, I mean it is yeah. it, but it's not it's not war reporting or anything no. like that it's sort of like taking it seriously but knowing your place in the kind of news lineup. yeah um, but ultimately the the news gathering methods the, the reporting tactics it's all the same stuff same skill set what I loved about working for American media which was very different to 
over here in the UK was we it's pretty much standard in any newsroom. You do not pay for stories. Mm. There is no budget for paying for stories. You can pay for photographs. Right. You can pay for a photo shoot with a celebrity. That's a very different situation, but you can't pay for stories. I didn't know that. So everything really since about two thousand and six I learned how to get stories without a penny Gosh. ever being spent. No tip fees, nothing at Never. all. Never. You just I weren't allowed. No idea. It, it's against kind of ethical code. Wow. Because there's so much, it becomes questionable then. No, like, a few big that, names in British showbiz journalism who never would have had a story. Well, exactly. <laughs> and then how? And then it also makes you question how much of what's printed in British uh, tabloids yeah. is just because a freelancer wanted to get, yeah. you know, a cash grab of that course, week. Of course. Wow. Well, yeah. There's a video that I made. I think it's on this channel. That's when I was keeping this channel as the backup only. I did a research video about journalism. And I compare Omid with, uh, oh my God, what's his name? I'm seeing his face. Um, oh my God. Okay, let me pause. I need to look it up, otherwise I'm going to be messed up with this. Yeah, Von and Farrell. I You won't believe how long it took me to f remember his name. I remember his mother's name, and then it's through that I was able to remember his name. All right, so Von and Farrell. I compare Omid with Von and Farrell, but I think woman... One and Farrow is a somewhat slightly a little bit higher up because uh, but whatever I don't want to make that use distinction but I sort of compare him with one and Farrow due to the ethic way of doing their work because Omid when you look at the environment where he was operating in he could, he could have easily jump on the bandwagon and do the same unethical behavior of journalism. But he did not. So this is very crucial when you look at Omid. Because at the time when they were bashing on Megan, all the others were get. I don't know how much money they made, but they were all over. But he was the only one who refused to do that. So he stick with his principle and all of that go watch that video uh, what did i call it something of uh yeah there it is i had to go in the program to look for it it's season one episode two journalism within a fishbowl world of lies and i think it was with in that video where i made that comparison yeah so omid stuck with principle and ethic and this is why they hate him this is why they don't like him over there because he's not doing the unethical kind of reporting. And th there was one interview that he did and he said many times when he has stories, he doesn't, about the Sussexes that is, he doesn't try to be the first one to put it out because they're going to start calling him out. He waited until the others come out first before he put his stories out. And I always said there's always perspective into journalism the same journalist i mean the same story could be there and you have different journalists in that same space each one of them will be standing in a different um different spot and each one of them will have a different point of view so i don't know why these people operate that way there needs to be a huge huge reform in the uk with that way of uh, operating okay so let's continue all right, this is when Cartier step in and get paid for selling royal stories. Pay for selling royal stories. Prince Charles also has a legendary temper, as his staff know to their cost. One of his later butlers was Ken Stronner, who sold stories to the press, which revealed what his master was like to serve. Megan was their golden ticket. Baggage for God. Okay, most of the staff and courtiers aren't paid well by the royal family. In the last couple of years, with the cost of living crisis, everything has been expensive in the UK. This is the easy and fast way to earn extra cash. And the worst thing is, one thing I realized with in the UK, many of these people will do, and I've said this very early on when I started looking into the debacle that's going on in the UK, is that they will get paid a small amount to do major damage okay they'll go to the end of the earth to get you know to destroy somebody for very little 
Okay, most of this. Okay, I just read that they have been selling royal stories since forever. As soon as Dicky left, he went to go sell his royal stories, and the royal family blackball him after that. Ah,、oh, really? Very interesting. Okay, it's why Dan Wooten succeeded because in the British media they are paying people to get stories. British media they are paying people to get stories. True, because remember, I know that was set up pack shots. Remember, he was filmed the dad getting measured for the suit, reading、yeah. up about England. So if、yeah. he wasn't invited, that doesn't even make sense. And I know the the pack set him up with that, but that was on the pretense that he was going to the wedding. So what、yeah. she's saying doesn't add up. Well, let's take. Why don't we get her on next well, week? And- We are not paying her two hundred dollars for an interview. We are not paying her two hundred dollars for an interview. And it can only descend it into blackmail from there. Gather journalism. As for royal family, they turn the tables. They are blackmailers too.、Uh, they are good at that. Okay, unmasking the was it Ashkenaz Ashkenazi. Okay, I don't know what is that. I keep on seeing this. Okay, who am I saying? Okay, let me just black this because it's not all the time I want to be into this. Just get rid of it. Don't open on my timeline again. Omid was fortunate he worked in American media. It instilled in him a code of ethic that is lacking in British media. Great interview. Guessing then on Shutter Island, it's more than likely that them poorly paid staffers and enablers are in a cottage industry, a cozy racket of cash grab, all about Benjamin. Okay, in the U.S., Benjamin is pretty much money. Okay, Rebecca English is the dawn of the royal voter. I had no idea it operated in such a way. Fascinating. I've learned a lot about how England works as a country thanks to Harry and Meghan. I'm telling you, me too. Because before we had that perception, the facade that they were selling, oh, it sold. It was sold. Okay, I thought they had that kind of code of ethic. They had high standard and all of that. But when you look deep into it, you realize they are freaking bottom feeders. Okay, I've learned a lot about how England works as a country thanks to Harry and Meghan. Omid completing quite a few of the details between this and the scale of Tory corruption. Even that, I didn't really look at too much into that. I used to think, okay. I mean, I'm telling you,、um, the UK had that. Well, it's the same thing that I just repeat. The facade of thing they sold it. Let's just say, but they were not leaving. They were they were not willing to leave Meghan alone. It's to that that's really destroying them. Okay, well, not Meghan who's doing that. They don't want whoever's opening their mouth about Meghan. They don't want who's creating who's pretty much self-inflicting. He is really exposing the British press. Well, Omid is not exposing anything. The British media have been doing all of the things that they've been doing openly, and they're very proud of it. It's just that nobody ever called them out. But when you look deeper into their things, you see they're pretty much telling us how they operate. It's just that Omid sort of plug in the dots and just put it. Plain and simple for you to understand, but he's not exposing anything. The media, the UK media, have exposed themselves. They've been doing it. I have an example of a, a interview, one of those、uh, I don't know, a clip that I have where it's saying they're not gonna pay semi money, two hundred dollars to come and for an interview. So they pretty much been telling us nothing new here. Omid is not really explaining anything new. It's just that some people were not paying attention. All right, so let's go to the next tweet. I need to listen to that hour long. I only listen to that part that I share with you. It was a minute, a minute and sixteen second, I think. Next tweet. There's a lot. I, this video probably gonna be two parts. Okay, the palace is also investigating to ensure it could not have leaked from within. But sources have said the letter is locked away, and only a tiny handful of people ever saw it. <laughs> only a tiny handful of people saw the letter. King Charles, there's the laugh here. Oh my God!、Mm. My last video,、uh, the way that I I saw, the, I mean I've seen it before, but some of the thing that I've said is like. The the courtiers is like they don't want who's running the show, they're running the show, and then if、uh, Charles doesn't agree with their nonsense, they I don't know they blackmail him. They're using letterhead 
to threaten Harry, the king's son? Can you imagine this? My God. Okay, and Harry, what I've said on the last video, Harry was there to really look out for them. But the both the father and the son, William and, and Charles, put themselves in so much stupidity where they trapped them. At some point, they should just, you know, be like Harry and said, forget it. I mean, I'm not saying forget it. Don't be the heir to the throne. Well, most people will be, yeah, please leave. But if they want to stay, it's just don't give a F about what story is coming out. Just take it because this thing is like drip, drip, drip. Can you imagine every morning you get up, you're afraid of stories that they're going to leak about you. And then at the same time, they go ahead and do the same thing again. And they're piling the people around them or piling on, on secrets for them. Uh, this is unbel that's not a way of living that that's just stupid okay they better ask that tiny handful and leave megan and harry's name out of their mouths okay i cannot see that tweet she's responding to inquiring minds would like to know okay charles leaked that letter in april 10 valentine law and because law could control the narrative favorably for charles and manipulate the messaging and insinuate it was the Sussexes that leaked it. It was fine. There was no blowback on Charles until the Sussexes sent legal letters. That's right. I, oh my God, how could I forget that? Yes. Okay, given that legal letters have been sent by the Sussexes lawyers as well as the palace since the story was published, it seems I was wrong in assuming that it came from the Sussex's camp. Sorry to all about that, but even more intriguing. Oh my God, I did share this. Yes, I completely forgot. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, there's two comments under it. Let's see here. Okay, he backtracked. Huck and Valentine only have the letter from Megan who gave it to him. But now, because there's a blowback on something everyone and the boy rats knew about, there's all of a sudden going to be an investigation. Why wasn't there one in April? Is the same letter the same? Okay, let's see here. Content, content. It had Charles' name. The only difference now is the British royal family. The British media can control the end game narrative because they then control it. One smart Kate Middleton is deservingly taking the fall for it because she is racist. <laughs> All of them have demonstrated they are. <laughs> oh my God, this is not a... I'm just happy they, Harry and Meghan just got themselves out. Okay, royal scramble to hide Nigel art plague ahead of Obama's visit back in 2016. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, yes, Prince Charles really is the royal racist. Arthur Christopher Anderson and Sis. When was that? 2021. They all are. Okay, what is that? When I attend the royal wedding of Harry and Meghan in 2018, I observe external joy and adoration and the dysfunction behind the scenes. A Viscountess told me Meghan will never be accepted. this woman existed all the alarm bells rang at Buckingham Palace and they I could almost hear them saying pull the shutters down it's an invasion she's mixed race she's American she's a divorcee actress those are four ticks no member of the royal family the senior members ever thought they would see having to be ticked when it came to Harry's bride all the things that frightened the royal family have suddenly arrived on their doorstep it's extremely difficult sometimes to keep a straight uh, face when the Home Secretary I'm said to me uh, there's, a, there's a gorilla coming in so I said to him what an extraordinary remark to make very unkind about anybody and uh, so you know, I stood in the middle of the room and pressed the bell and the doors opened and there was a gorilla <laughs> and I had the most terrible trouble in keeping you know he had short body long arms all the things that frightened the royal family have suddenly arrived on their doorstep I can hear Diana laughing now Meghan's marrying into a family which has, to put it mildly, a dodgy track record on race. It's not Meghan Markle's problem, it's their problem. And a royal commentator muted loud, enough for me to hear, the wedding was too black. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. December 22. Who's that? Novo Ridge, she, her. Oh, mm. 
well there's harry and megan they left okay so nothing to worry about now we just need to keep on praying why show anyone the letter to start with after what happened with megan letter to thomas i'm telling you i raised that concern as well okay megan sue for that went to the end of the earth to make sure she got the justice that she deserved and you think she will leak that all right let me move on okay because i have a lot more to share with you next tweet these people they love problems they don't know how to stay quiet okay next tweet so megan was supposed to wear a maternity dress because kate was pregnant funny that i i don't remember anyone suggesting the opposite when megan was both pregnant and postpartum all right so that's a retweet new camilla tommy exclusive scandal in february 2018 megan wore a summer dress for the royal foundation forum while kate wore something rather more conservative aka three-fourth sleeve dress someone should check on her she's losing it what what she wrote that because what is wrong with these people they pinpoint everything make something out of nothing Oh my God, these people are ridiculous. That was back in 20, what, what year was that? Back in 2018. And it did say it here. I saw it right here. Okay, although some believe the royal sisterhood broke down following a tearful row over bridesmaid dress fitting for Princess Charlotte and the run up to Harry and Meghan's wedding in May 2018, that royal foundation form proved to be a significant pinch point. At the time, the beast from the east was sweeping through the UK, leading to freezing temperature, heavy snow, and heavy winds. Royal aides were therefore surprised to find Meghan had dressed in a summer dress for the summit as Kate, who was seven months pregnant with Prince Louis at the time, opted for something rather than more conservative. Oh my God. Do you see any scenario by which Harry and Meghan overshadow Kate and Oh, Maria. yes, I do. I do. I mean, this is immediately was my first thought. You know, th this this could be a problem. What the hell is wrong with these people? And I, I said this moment here was when everything started. I didn't even know this story was out about the dress. What's wrong with her dress? Doesn't she have a coat probably is hang somewhere or someone is holding her jacket or something? Oh, Lord, these people are ridiculous. Okay, it's also... Is it 100? Okay. It's also interesting that the same journalist who claimed there was never any pressure for Megan to consider the wardrobe of other royals when choosing her outfit is now saying something completely different. These people are freaking ridiculous. Uh, so they're upset about sleeveless dress. <laughs> I can't... This is ridiculous. I'm telling you. Uh, why? Only when it's Megan. Uh, uh, uh. My God. Mm. Whatever. Okay, that's an ad. Whatever is here, and then I move on. Okay, is that the same Camilla who said the royal family aren't the least bit racist, but they don't like Americans? <laughs> the very same. <laughs> Pig and Trolani. <laughs> the very same. Okay, I use English and French keyboard, so you often find errors like this in my tweet. He is hoping you can cope. Okay, what is that? This is someone that I black. What is that? Post perfume. Oh, perfume. <laughs> Post perfume. Ah, oh, uh, was okay. Post perfume. Was she fragrant before and after pregnancy? It's called postpartum. Look it up if you don't believe me. What the hell? Okay, I don't know. All right, conservative is relative. Megan's dress is professional and perfectly suited to the event. That's what I see here. Kate's dress is showing more legs and Megan, but it's up, but it's appropriate for her too. Okay, it could have all been summed up by the phrase she doesn't know her place. Megan thought she was going to further the agenda of many causes she is passionate about, but realized the British royal family priority was themselves, their <laughs> their profile the monarchy yeah that is true that is true okay okay after this that's it royal aides aren't surprised when she dressed her daughter in summer dress while dad wearing sweater okay megan clearly wore coat outside but on april 2013 kate appeared with this summer maternity dress second picture without coat and look at what uh, the photographers wearing 
Ah, oh, I see what she's saying here. So the point from the original tweet on this tweet here, saying the way Megan dressed, but here the squad did that investigation. Let's look at this picture here. Look at it. everybody's wearing coat. Okay, look at the photographers, long sleeve, they outside. So there she is here, pregnant with which which one? The second one? All right, sleeveless, but outside. But Megan is sleeveless inside. Like I was saying when I was looking at the picture, maybe somebody's holding Megan's jacket or something like that. Oh, God, these people are ridiculous. All right, after these two, that's it. Okay, Omid said the British media fantasized Kate. Her Camilla Tamney is praising Kate Middleton's dress code as if she is a child who should be giving cookies because she dressed conser conservatively and color. Queen Elizabeth II like over the substance of what she said, which up until now we still haven't deciphered. Camilla Tamney is attempting rather foolishly, I might add, to throw up smoke screen in hopes of hiding the mess known as the British royal family. The concert has charged her to divert attention away from what she, Chucky, and Billy and Kitty Boo Boo, <laughs> Kitty Boo Boo, or racist trash, the crown stinks. Mm. All right, so let's move on. Let's move on. These people are ridiculous. And it seems like it is working if it is to throw the squirrel. So that I may talk, squirrel! For distraction. Nobody's talking about Chuck and, and I haven't heard much about uh, the concert, the three and the marriage, quite sometimes. All right, next tweet. Dear Camilla Timely, just because you work on TV and the royal family, so you think you have the right to tell Megan she is not human enough because she is black, okay? Keep lying to misinform the public about Harry and Megan. There is time for everything. Sussex Squad, Harry and Megan. Okay, Tina. So she retweet this. I think th this is married, it, it seems like. Okay, two minutes and 20 seconds. All right, let's listen. 20 commentary piece where she said, sorry, Hillary Mantel, but it's not abominably racist to question Meghan Markle's behavior. She writes in this piece, quote, has anti-Americanism and even misogyny been at play here? Certainly. She's so close to misogynoir. She's so close. Continuing on. But I am yet to witness any hostility towards the couple because of the color of Meghan Markle's skin. What the Could heck? Just spitballing here. Could it be that you don't see it because you have never experienced it because you are viewing this through the lens of a white person? Is it perhaps a problem that majority white people are making decisions in the news industry about what is racist or not? I'm just gonna give you the answer, it is. Here is her piece from December 2nd, 2023. In this piece, she refers to Megan as a brash blabbermouth, uninhibited, mm -hmm. overconfident American, class, verse, Brash. And Afua Hirsch describes this phenomenon in her book. Talks about classic British racism, only half said and half implied, a kind of polite prejudice that is only more pernicious for its subtlety. That right there. She provides every dog whistle to what she actually wants to say, and that is a black woman from America had the audacity to come in the British royal family and want to work and get her feet wet. And yes, not everyone gets along, that's okay, but that is literally not a reason to berate someone in the news. That is my problem. But the two, two things that came to mind. If Megan wanted to sue these people for defamation and all of that, she could because there's mil millions of articles out there. It's just that she doesn't care. She doesn't. I mean, she care, but the time to go through all of this. The other thing is all this nonsense that is being written about her is just for the history book. But in the long run, it might, you know, depend on the mindset of people. If they see things for what it is, it might backfire to see how bad the UK is. You know, if you look in the future, if those young people, my great grandkids, which I don't have yet, okay, when they look back of this time, they will say how horrible these people are. So the thing that they're trying to put for the history book might backfire. All right, we don't live forever, so who knows what the. But the main thing is the squad uh, really put them on check. It's nonsense that they put any squad that came across it, put them on check. And clarify it and saying that's not true. So these are other things young people, my great grandkids, future grandkids will look into. All right, so let's continue. 
happen with the Meghan Markle discourse. I am not a super fan, but I have yet to have someone give me a clear, concrete reason why she deserved to be treated the way she was. Because being more of an extrovert is not a reason to have these continuous attacks on you in the media. None of this is surprising by a woman who has gotten stories wrong or written extremely irresponsible and dangerous articles based on very little research and research from the same right-wing think tank. It's not surprising, but we should expect better and we should call it what it is. Mm -hmm. Also for any royal reporter watching this video, may I suggest the book so you want to talk about race? Geoma provides the answers to all of your burning questions. For more on this, I would suggest going over and watching Matta a facts video on it. She also calls out Lord Everett, who is absolutely fantastic. And he is definitely a creator to go check out. So you go Lord Everett. One of the things that I've said when, uh, I think, which story that came? Was it Spare or the docuseries? I think it was the docuseries. And I said, these people are like operating like terrorists. Go on PYTE. I did a video about that where I uh, spell out the word, uh, you know, I look up the word terrorist and each of the definition under the word terrorist that popped up and I show the behavior of the UK. So if in that video, and I also said, you know, Megan should call these people into an international court because when they put their nonsense out, it goes worldwide. I don't know. Some, I don't know. Something needs to be done. This is not right. All right. There's all those tag. Okay, the British media and British royal family are just unbelievable. Kamala Tamni is a liar, is another mental unstable, white privileged racist. Kamala will catch up with her. Okay, Meredith, keep up the good work. Yeah, I came across her, something like this. One of the squad share her video and I follow her. Um, I think she's on YouTube as well. Was she? Where did I go and follow her? I know I'm not on TikTok, but there was someplace else I saw her and then I think I follow her there. Okay, Meredith, keep up the good work. All I know is that Kamala Tamni is a liar. What people fail to realize, black is a description, not another state of being. Culture is how you grow up. Treat people how you want to be treated. With respect, kindness, and love, you will have no problem. Well, let's, the UK, well, when I said the UK, I don't want to say all of them because there's some good, well-minded Brits, but uh, the bunch, the royal vats, they need to know that. Okay, so there's another video about her. So the distraction, if it's what Chuck and to be in a marriage want the distraction to happen, it's working. My goodness. And a woman as well. My God. All right, the British media officially saying that the royal family isn't racist, but instead anti-American and misogynistic is wild, just wild. That's mind blowing. Okay, so that was, that's a retweet. And I think I've seen this video before. Kamala Tomney, the Daily Telegraph associate editor, a royal reporter, admits royal family are anti-American. <laughs> wow. To stand in front of national television to say that? And I think when she said that, this video, the queen was alive. Meanwhile, the queen was trying to do the reasonable thing. Trying to connect the bridge between the U.S. and the U.K. But these people are just <laughs> putting fire after the bridge burn the bridges oh my lord all right let's listen operating in a silo that they weren't consulting the queen and that they didn't think that they had a future within the family my perception of actual palace behavior and bear in mind i'm probably closer to this story than anybody here mm. and i speak to the people that i speak to and mm. i know people are very close to it indeed is i haven't heard any semblance of racism in the tone that is being expressed against Meghan. Now, has there been a degree of anti-Americanism? Yes. Has there been a degree of misogyny? Not least with this blaming of Meghan for all of it and not having Prince Harry be held responsibility for part. Yes, there has been. But nobody from the palace has expressed anything about the fact that Meghan is a woman of color. Only operating in a silo. Ah, all of this gonna come back to haunt them. Okay, so Kamala Tamni, now that you've said the royal family is anti-American, how does that work for William? 
who has said he wants to extend his work to America, seems the future king might take issue with your conclusion even though you are close to the people who are close to the story. <laughs> That's a very good point. Okay, yet they beg, beg for American acceptance. You gotta love it. Love the way she assert her royal connect. I know she was giving her credential that you know she's close to those people. She knows what she's talking about. It's almost like uh, the following video was filmed on the fifth of March, twenty twenty one, two days before Harry and Meghan's interview was seen by anyone. It's Victoria Arbiter, A R B as in boy, I T E R, and I am royal commentator for CNN. <laughs> Arbiter, when she was giving her credential with CNN. Victoria Arbiter, A R B as in boy, I T E R, and I am royal commentator for CNN. Royal commentator at CNN. I right, and they fire her ass. She should not have mentioned CNN. <laughs> but anyway, it's the kind of credential that they, she was giving, so you could take her credibility, whatever nonsense she's gonna say, so you could believe it. Gay okay, love the way she asserts her royal connection right off the bat. She wants the world to know that she's very much the insider. Yep. And at the same time, we ought to believe that the palace never leaked a brief. Yep, the Zovolink eye. That's exactly that. I mean, no one ever said they were only racist. Yes, they are also sexist, misogynistic, and also xenophobic. So much for post-Brexit global Britain, there is a glaring leadership vacuum, whether it be the prime minister or the monarch, and they really bring it on themselves. That's it. All right, this woman should keep talking when Prince William is on his next world statesman <laughs> tour to the U.S., he should bring his lovely woman with him. I'm sure it will go down well with patriotic Americans. Okay, this is what happened when they defend evil people. There is no escape route to paint them as good people because all their actions are bad. That is true. Being on the wrong side of history is something else. Okay, well, they can stay out of the U.S. then and keep their vanity project to themselves. No, no, they're just quite provincial and backward about anyone who isn't just like them. Well, World Britannia. <laughs> Alright, there's that. Let's go to the next tweet. How long do I... Oh my god. I'm, yeah, this video is going to be two parts because I still have more. Next tweet. Okay, one of my favorite Tommy lies was when she said squaddies were threatening her and <laughs> her family and the squad said, Oh, really? Let us help you call the police then. And squaddies started tagging the police and Tommy lies got quite quiet. <laughs> I, I shared this on my community board when I come across it. Okay, so there's the squad going back. All right, remember when the police were in her comments stating they received no report about it, there's a laugh, and we responded by giving them detail like the screenshot she posted so they can look into it. <laughs> I remember that. All right, let me go into that. Okay, lol, the threat was exceptionally nasty toward her husband. I wonder why. Okay, not only did we say, oh, really? <laughs> we also said, who the F knew that bitch had a man and kids? <laughs> it was a collective. <laughs> I know. <laughs> the squad or something. Uh, the way we were so kind and even tagged the police for her. And the police replied. <laughs> Yeah, I just left comment saying this, but I was like, wait, am I just thinking this or did it happen when I saw this comment? <laughs> she never received another threat ever again. <laughs> That's the squad. She never received another threat ever again. The emoji still cracked me up though. <laughs> <laughs> Let me pause so I could laugh. It took more a minute. I was laughing. The woman wake up and tell a uh, minimum 12 lies a day. We were all like, you have kids? Hello, well. Like, girl, nobody was studying you. <laughs> That's an ad. Let me read some more. The squad are la just laughing. Haha, <laughs> good time. There's the laugh. I remember. Timeline was so funny. Chill people tagging the mad police. Get yeah, lol, I just love Sussex Squad. The lion react epic level. Leaving the Greenfell Ladies terrorist organization has to be the lowest of the low. All right, this is an ad. Let me go to the next tweet. Yeah, I was laughing about that. 
<clears throat> I didn't I didn't post I didn't comment on anything I was just there reading the tweet all right next tweet Prince Harry and Spare I spent the weekend shooting and Megan stayed in that card alone Camilla Tomney Megan went shooting and made Prince William's friends mad because she won't let them be sexist and make fun of transgender people and peace this is why you should hate her maybe this is where I saw that I read this somewhere um and i used to make reference to it so maybe this is the bs i was reading oh my god these people are freaking ridiculous okay robbed by the spinal okay prince harry okay this is spare the, the left side is spare the right side is camilla tomney okay nutted by his uh, spaniel lupo barking as if we were burglar really hushed lupo where's kate out with the kids uh to bed next time then it was time to say goodbye we really needed to finish packing and we needed to go meg gave me a kiss and told us both to have fun on our shooting weekend and off she went to spend her first night alone at natka over the next few days i can't stop talking about her now that she and granny had met now that she and willie had met now that she was no longer a secret within the family, I had so much to say. My brother listened, attentive, always smiling, thinly, boring to hear someone besotted go on and on. I know, but I can't stop myself. To his credit, he didn't tease, didn't tell me to shut up. On the contrary, he said what I hope he said, even needed him to say, happy for you, Harold. <laughs> Meanwhile, he went and backstabbed him. My God! Let, this is Camilla Tomney. Okay, the prince and princess of Wales may well have been influenced by mutual friends raise, raising concern following a shooting party at Sandrium when Meghan apparently clashed with 16 in invited guests over issue including the imminent election of Donald Trump as U.S. President in January 2017. As Tom Brower revealed in his 2022 book Revenge, without hesitation, Meghan challenged every guest whose conversation contravene her values what the hell beyond harry's hearing some friend questioned megan's walkery megan was a damp dampener on the party they concluded she lacked any sense of humor driven home after sunday lunch the text punch between the cars omg what about her said one harry must be effing nuts what in the name so who would who would know about this to tell her who went and tell her to there was this uh, kind of party to switch it up like that oh lord mm. let's see here then they blame megan because they say she was the reason why harry got woke and stopped shooting with william and his friend yes that's the thing i heard as well in uk journalism is licensed to lie and to bully Kamala Tamney is a liar megan never went to any of the royal shooting weekends it was likely KK Kate who always joins them. Yeah, what was it? There's a picture of them when shooting and Kate was holding the <coughs> those dead animals um whatever they went to shoot. Camilla and Tom Barrer are disgusting liars who are hell bent on destroying a couple because they refuse to stay and be abused. I think the journalists hated her for being progr progressive aka woke and it's part of the reason they really went after her. They know royalists are Tory conservative, and if he is labor work, then their readers, she doesn't belong in the royal family and deserve all the hate. What was it? The UK was uh, had already a vision which direction the country was going to go. Okay, there was the Brexit. Everything was going well. This is what I said. Harry and Meghan's union is like the lifeline in comparison to the 2020 election in the U.S., because the UK was full in and their BS, they were hypnotized. Reality was not in the most majority of the Brits' periphery. They were gobbled up all the lies. They were delusion into the lies. But Harry and Meghan's union is like the lifeline to put a pause that the UK needed to sort of make a reflection on themselves. Because they voted against their best interests. Everything that needed to go, you know, where they, they have the chance to switch up and see what was really happening, they didn't. So, unlike the U.S., 
the U.S., the people went out and vote and look at all the mess that uh, Trump is in and some of his buddies and all that. And we need to follow through okay, the next election because they still at it. His buddies are still trying to make sure the election goes their way. And this is why I said the ship, you know, the plane is going down. We need to put our masks on first before we save other countries and do all this world kind of thing. So Harry and Meghan's union is what the U.S. is for the 2020 election. So it's up to the people to switch course. All right. And for the U.S. to keep going. But my goodness. Okay. I think the journalists hated her. I really don't know what to say about this. I don't know if they just see the figurehead and then they just write nonsense because this is what the royal family wants. Okay, Camilla is lying as usual. Lying Camilla Tomney is getting very sloppy. And the other thing is, these people are adults. They should know the difference between right and wrong. Look at Omid. Omid saw the wrong and decided not to participate. Instead, just stick to the journalistic aspect of things. But these people, the others, the older ones, cannot do it. My goodness. And this is the mindset that they had since, you know, back in the days, those old people. But young people, hopefully, they fight through this nonsense to have a better future. Okay, Because I remember um, before the pandemic, some of the things, or even before Harry and Meghan kind of thing, the things that I used to be l watching on on YouTube, you see the young people uh, getting together. Uh, they're traveling from UK to Germany without any problem. But now I don't even follow these people because now I have t um, my focus is on these kind of things here to share with you. But I don't even think they're doing this kind of thing because of the Brexit. They can't travel freely anymore. Okay. You know, I used to watch a lot of fitness things and all of that. And you see those young people, you know, getting together. And that's how I know about this uh, uh, young Brit who created that uh, multi-billion dollar industry and clothing. It's almost as high as Nike. Uh, and he used to be, uh, what is his name? Um, he used to be a pizza delivery. But uh, he made a name for himself. But each time people in the UK try to lift up themselves, get away from the whatever situation that they're in, but the institution squash them. No, you're supposed to stay in that level. But these old people, they don't want young people to flourish. They want to hover everything for themselves. Oh, Lord. Okay, after this too, that's it. Isn't it amazing that spare is available? Okay, um, was it another shooting weekend? where they mark him for not eating scrambled eggs with the others but had granola with Megan in their room and did yoga. Or was this just another weekend? All right, Lion Camilla. Tommy is getting very sloppy. Let me go into that. Okay, oh God, yes. Granola gate. I forgot about this. I forgot about that. Someone really needed to make Megan and the, the tough West End musical comedy depicting all this ridiculous happening and anecdotes it would be theatrical gold. Oh my God, they create all sort of nonsense. Mm. Next tweet. Okay, there's this. Oh my God, this is a long read.